at your neighbor and say, neighbor, whatever you're going through, it is done. Oh, yeah. oh come on, look at somebody else and say, neighbor.
If you believe it's done, come on, give God praise on today. Oh, come on and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. And shout it's done. It's done. In Jesus' name it's done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. like me you have something that you need from the Lord if you're like me you know someone that needs something from the Lord I believe that if we come together and pray that God will meet my need as well as meet your need because scripture says that one can chase a thousand, but two can put 10,000 to flight. And I got some things that I need to get out the way in the name of Jesus. So while I pray, you pray for me and I'll pray for you. And we'll watch God move. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we gather around your throne, O oh God, with our various needs and our various problems those of our own and that of my brother and my sister we know you oh God to be a prayer answering God and we know there's nothing too hard for you and though it seems strange and it seems difficult right now you promise victory in your word. Though sickness prevail, you said it was by the stripes of your son Jesus that we're healed. You said, God, that you know what we have need of even before we ask. And because we know that you are the God that already knows, we also know that you are the God that will. So God, we thank you for what you're going to do right now. We lift our faith and we tell you thank you. I lift up my brother and my sister and I tell you thank you for their life. Thank you for every blessing you're going to bestow upon them. God, you promised to rebuke the devourer of the enemy. So we come against him right now in Jesus' name. And we cancel his assignment. I cancel the assignment of the enemy over my brother and my sister's life right now in Jesus' name. And I call him defeated right now in Jesus' name. I apply the blood of Jesus right now. Because God, you said when I see the blood, hallelujah, that I'll pass over. Thank you. Hey, yes, God. We thank you, oh God, for passing over. We thank you, Lord God, for the way that you're going to move and you're going to twist. And you're going to change the heart of the king. Hallelujah. We thank you, oh God, for taking us around the enemy's snare. We thank you, Lord, for salvation on this morning. In the name of Jesus. God, you said if I be lifted up from this earth, that you will draw all men unto you. So God, right now with our voice, we lift you up with our praise. Right now, God, with the clapping of our hands, we lift you up. God, right now, we may great your in territory because you said you inhabit the praises of your people. And God, we know that when you come in, Jesus, that you're coming in with everything that we need. You're coming in with healing. 
You're coming in with deliverance. You're coming in with manifestation and demonstration. You're coming in with greater power. You're coming in with greater joy. So we make great your territory. And we lift you up, oh God. High above every circumstance. High above every issue. And the Satan is defeated. And God is exalted. Satan is defeated. And God be exalted. Satan is defeated. And God be exalted. So we bless your name. And we give you the glory for the one that's going to be saved. We give you the glory for the one that's going to go down. We thank you on this morning for the move of your spirit. We thank you. Bless our man's servant as he brings forth the bread of life. But God, if you want to interrupt this service, we say have your way in this place. In the name of Jesus, hey, have your way, God. Hallelujah. Run us if you want us to run. Shout us if you want us to shout. Roll us if you want us to roll. We'll say yes to your will. We'll say yes to your way. Yes to your will, oh God. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. We bless you and we magnify you. Every grateful heart, put your hands together. Come on. Clap those hands like the enemy is between them. Clap those hands like victory. Clap those hands like you know what God is going to do for you. I may not see it, but I believe it. Come on, clap, 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 clap. Yes, God, I believe you. I believe you. Yes, Lord. Hey, God. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Hey, because it's already done. The praise team said it's already done. So we're going to take the word and believe it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God, our scripture reading, hallelujah, glory, thank you Lord Jesus, Satan is defeated and he has no power in this service, this is God's service and he's going to have his way in this place, our scripture reading will be coming from Joshua 6, beginning at verse number 16 and we're going to end at 20. And it came to pass at the seventh time, when the priests blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, shout, for the Lord have given you the city, and the city shall be accursed, even it and all that are therein. To the Lord only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are within the house, because she hid the messengers that were, went, that were sent. And ye in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed things, lest ye make yourselves accursed. When ye take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it, but all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord, they shall come into the treasury of the Lord. Verse 20, so the people shouted with the priest, blew with the trumpets and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city every man straight before him and they took the city just tell somebody if you just praise them that's it right there if you would just praise him, he'll bring the walls down. Turn to somebody else. Maybe that neighbor didn't catch it. Look at somebody else and tell him, if you just praise him, he'll bring the walls down. Look at somebody else and tell him, if you praise him, he'll bring the walls down. Now go ahead and touch yourself and say, self, if you praise him, he'll bring the walls down. Somebody need to praise God right now. Hallelujah. 
Welcome to the live stream coming from the sanctuary of Refuge Temple. Go ahead, turn up the volume, and let's have church. Your devil chaser, your 
bring you out. He's gonna make a way. Open up the windows of heaven. Open up the windows of heaven. Pull you out of blessing. Pull you out of blessing. Won't have room to receive. That's who he is. That's who he is. Come on. 
Atmosphere, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on, just lift your hands wherever you are right now. He is our Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our God, for you are worthy to be praised. We give you all the glory, for we worship you, our Lord. You are worthy. Somebody say, Worthy. Come on, somebody say, Worthy. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. I said, You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you. For you are worthy to be praised. All over the room, let's sing it together. You are Alpha. You are Alpha. And Omega. And Omega. 
we worship. We worship you, For you are worthy. Everybody again, you are Alpha. You are Alpha. Yes, and Omega. And Omega. We worship you, our Lord.
Put your hands together, give God some praise. Come on, lift your voices. Tell them thank you for one more day. We praise you and glorify your name. Tell them glory, hallelujah. You are the Jesus, yes you are. Your hands together. Before you're seated, go find two or three people and tell them the Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. Smile at them. Let them know you love them. So easy. He's alive. Oh, the Jesus in me. The Jesus in me. The Jesus in you. The Jesus in me. The Jesus in me. The Jesus in you. So easy. you shall have love one towards another. I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. We magnify the name of the Lord. We thank him for his goodness. We pray that the Lord has been great to you this week, that all your desires have been met. And that's why you came into the house of the Lord to thank him for being such a good God. Amen. Anybody know but me, besides me how good God has been to us this week? I could have lost my life on the highway, but God has been good. There's been food in the cabinet out there. God's been good. Somebody ought to scream, thank you, Lord, for being so good. <laughs> we magnify the Lord. We thank him for his goodness and his mercy. We ask the Lord for traveling mercy for those that are still coming back from Jacksonville, Florida, that was a part of the IWC Women's Conference meeting, and we pray that the Lord would watch over them, keep their vehicles from human error and mechanical failure, and that they will come back with snood and restored to give God the praise. And those of you that did not go, amen, I know that the Lord been talking to you in your house, amen, in your living room, in your bedroom. As you walk through the house, God has been ministering to you. Anybody got a dance in their living room this week? Anybody found time to tell God thank you in their house? No. Wait a minute here. If God has been good to you in your home, on your job, I dare you to jump up right now and give him your best praise. Just look at somebody and say, you don't know how good he's been. But I thank him. But I thank him. What about that? But I thank him. Oh, I feel an anointing in this place. Oh, good. 
good. So good. He has been so good to me.
There's healing in your praise. There's deliverance in your praise. There's breakthrough in your praise. There's anointing in your praise. And I won't take it back. You my doctor and my lawyer. And I won't take it back. You have been so good to me. So good. So good. So good. So very good. So good. So good. so good, he has been so good to me. Well, you're my doctor and my lawyer, and I won't take it back. You're my doctor and my lawyer, and I won't take it back. You're my doctor and my lawyer, and I won't take it back. your hands together all over this building. So good. He's been so good to us. So good. So good.
if he did not notice it, if he did not understand it, the Holy Ghost was walking in this building. Somebody had ought to jump up and grab a hold of it as it walked through. The Holy Ghost was not just for you, it was for your family, for those that needed a miracle. As it walked through the house, you should have stood up. Say, it's me, oh Lord, that needs another touch. I feel it walking, I feel it walking. Grab a hold to it. Ha ha saka. Hey God. Walk, 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 walk. Come on, I see you. As it's walking through it, there's breakthrough for your children. There's breakthrough for your financial issues. I don't want to see you. Hey, God. He's already worked it out for you. He's already delivered you from your problem. He's taking the load off of you right now. Anybody in here feel free? Anybody in here feel delivered? I dare you to give him a praise right in your seat. It's walking, it's walking. Hey God, hallelujah. Hey God. He's a great, great God. Turn with me just for a few moments to the book of Ezekiel. And we will go to the 37th chapter. And our reading will begin at verse number one and conclude at the end of verse number five. That is the book of Ezekiel, that's the Old Testament. Chapter 37, verses 1 through 5. As you rest upon your feet, with the exception of our mothers, it reads on this wise. And the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out into the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in this open valley. And lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord, thou knowest. And again he said unto me, Prophesy unto these bones. 
Say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. Look at somebody on your left and your right and just say, You shall live. Ezekiel stood looking across a valley as the passage opens up and we see him. He's looking across a valley that is filled with bones that stretch as far as the eye could see. Everywhere he looked, there was nothing but bones. Bones that were brittle, amen. They were easily broken. They were bleached by the relentless heat from the sun that shined upon them on a regular basis throughout the day and they were worn down by the the ravages of time amen time time has a way of the sun beating you down that even the softest leather will become cracked and wrinkled at the strength of the sun's light on them bones at this time which represented at once a proud nation of israel that was following with his anointing and their power and their authority, now seemingly without hope. Does this not remind you of some things that we're going on now in our lives? No matter how much we try to praise him, we're still seeming hopeless. Don't know how we're gonna make it till tomorrow. Don't know who's gonna be the next president. Stuff that we've been wrestling with on a regular basis just living and leaving, living without hope. Hey man, this is a devastating reminder of what has been a community of God from the foundation. This is devastating to this community because you know when Abraham went out, he said, I'm gonna make you a father of many nations. This group of individuals and people that God said, I'm gonna bless your going in and your coming out. This group of people that says there's going to be more of you than the sands on the beach shore. Here they are. This community that God, of God's foundation, or formation, I should say, of God's formation that he called out and hand-selected and said, I'm going to bless you. Now they're in a devastating situation. Now I'm bearing silent witness to the devastation of reality that the downfall of God's coveted people because of their sin. Amen. Uh, it's quiet now. As Ezekiel surveyed the land with God at his side, he promised, a, he was posed, I should say this, a well, uh, uh, weighty question, something that had weight and merited. He said, son of man, can these bones live? again. Here they are, bones. Amen. I don't know about you. Uh, I, I never understood it. I'm just going to insert this in at the point um, that when y'all cook them neck bones and th there's very little meat on it, uh, but I see y'all sucking on the bones. What is it about them bones? <laughs> Somebody screamed they good. Here it is. But after a while, all of the juice is gone. <laughs> They're teaching me, trying to give me signals about pudding with rice or something. Here it is. They found that these bones, hey amen, this devastating this group. They see as you've surveyed the lives, you've surveyed the wreckage. He looked at all that was going on, and God said and posed that question, and I have to go back to it. Son of man, can these bones live again? 
can these bones live? I mean, perhaps it's a question that we find ourselves pondering. We ponder it, or, and I talked about it just a few minutes ago. We find ourselves looking, can these bones give it? As the election draw near, that America becomes divided amongst itself. It's divided, not only just because of the, the, the structure of election or the process of the political aspect of it, but even on the race issue, even on the man and woman issue, we are divided. Can this great nation live again? We're not out yet. Because do you know why? Because we are the salt of the earth. And we are, the earth has not lost its savior at this point in time. We're the seasoning that has kept the earth from going and falling into great despair. Because the body of Christ is still here because we have not finished and reached all of the nations and all of the people that we need to reach that should have an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as their personal savior. Amen. Here it is. We understand that we are looking at it, that we are understanding it. Amen. We see that the, this is not only that, but they're beginning to reach out and say, is this dry bone going to produce, if it comes alive, is it going to produce a new beginning? Are we going to be able to still look at it with expectation of hope in the future in which we long to find better days? There's a song that says that better days are coming. Amen. I don't know about you, but I believe that. It's not all doom and gloom. Better day. Matter of fact, just look at somebody and say, your better days are already on the way. I wish I had somebody that would speak it out of their mouth. Look at somebody down the road and say, you know what? Your better days are coming too. <laughs> Oh, I wish I had about 10 people that just screaming at me. Your better days are coming, Bishop. I know, I know. Somebody ought to tell the Lord, thank you. Even if you don't see them now, look at them and say, hey, they still on the way. Matter of fact, I'm going to thank you for being better days right now. But sometimes we face more than the same seemingly endless challenge of the past illnesses, past sicknesses. We find ourselves seemingly following these changes. We find ourselves dealing with debt and brokenness, broken relationships. I'm preaching hard right now see them dwindling and our faith starts to dwindle remember the days that when we got a doctor's report we didn't cry we didn't weep we just ran to the altar got our prayer partner and started to pray and in the process of prayer we say i know i'm healed we started to speak it out of our mouth i know i'm delivered amen but it seems now that we're so caught up in everything that everybody is we forget to have faith that God is a deliverer Amen. here it is we understand that we have staring into this valley of bones perhaps the mourning of the loss that once was we look into this new year that we're getting ready to face that we're coming into that is terrifying because of the unknown Amen. And because we wonder if we're still in a situation which makes us beyond hope, we're feeling that when we're going through this, that we shouldn't have the hope to know that God has the ability to deliver us and to bring us out of it. We're forgetting that I was once lost, but now I'm found. Amen. You know where you used to be working for $7.50 a day. Now you're into the thousands. It's not because you're so smart. It's not because you have all of those degrees. Because there are millions of people that have the same thing that you have. Amen. As an educational background and still they're on the unemployment line. But because of God's favor. I'm talking sense here today. 
I'm talking about the favor of God that made you step from the back of the line and put you to the front of the line. As a matter of fact, he didn't make you walk past that. He told them about faith. Amen. And in order to make you number one on the line, that's what kind of God we serve. You shall live. You shall live. Amen. Here we look at this and understand that there is a fresh start for a season. We're beginning in these new beginnings. We're looking for some things to happen. We're wondering, amen, if revival is going to come. We're wondering if revival is getting ready to happen again. Amen. As a young man, we would have, at the beginning of the year, we would have 40 days of prayer and re revival. We, We'd have revival all through the week, all through. We would be in church, amen, on Sunday morning, and we'd have an afternoon service, and then we'd have Sunday night service, and then we'd have prayer service on Monday, and uh, newcomer service on Tuesday, amen, midweek service on Wednesday, amen, and then Thursday, we'd have brotherhood service, and Friday, we'd have evangelistical night, and then Sunday night, Saturday night would be the night for our young people, and then we'd start over again. There was so much for us just coming together, amen, that we wanted to be one, because most of our friends and family members were at church, and we wanted to be a part of that worship service. Here it is, we're looking for revival again, but I'm here to tell you that revival starts in you. Amen. It is having to make up a mind to say, I'm going to serve you. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to praise you no matter where I am. Amen. I find myself pulling on the side of the road because I'm thinking about the goodness of the Lord and I want to run around the car a couple of times but I forget I'm on the middle of 95 highway. Here it is. There's some things that you have to give God a praise about even when you don't understand how he's going to make it happen. Can these bones live again, Lord? I know you can do all things, but I'm not sure how you're going to be able to regenerate the bone that you can find yourself in a position where the bones and the marrow would come together, the sinew would come together. How can you do it? It's not my place to ask you how. It's my place to tell you thank you for it, God, because you're about to do it. Here it is. Oh, can God really can God really breathe new life into something that seems to be far beyond the point, amen, of reconciliation? Is it possible that he can fill up these bones? There's no way that we can think about how he could put it back together. Amen, I'm here to tell you this. Even those of us that have messed up and backslid in Christ Jesus and said there's no way that God will accept me back. Some kind of way when you got down on your knees and asked for forgiveness, he was there to restore you again. Anybody in here has asked the Lord for one more chance? See, you can't be embarrassed about it. You can't be afraid to say I needed it. Oh, look at somebody and say, I asked for it, and I got it. <laughs> that. In reading Ezekiel's vision, amen, he recounts of the, the told in that chapter 37 of the biblical book, amen, which bears his name. We must ask why Ezekiel himself did not pose the question to God. Amen. Instead of the other way around. Amen. God asked him the question instead of him asking God. Amen. Sometimes God has to get our attention. Amen. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Ah, God, maybe I'm the only one. He had to shake a little bit. Amen. Amen. Didn't, didn't Ezekiel wonder? Uh, surely one of God's prophets who knew the word of those who preceded him, those other great prophets, Jeremiah, amen, Isaiah, those men that had a powerful word that he understood what the spirit of the prophecy of a prophet was all about. Amen. That preceded him would spoke the promise of rebirth. Amen. Here it is, that ex exile of God's people. 
people from a physical separation of, from the land of well, promise, amen, and also a spiritual separation from the God of promise, amen, and would not last forever. Somewhere along they found themselves saying, how can God separate us from the land and then not talk to us and then say he's going to come back into our lives. Amen. One of the things I like about God is that the promises of God are yea and nay. Amen. That once God promises something or once God gives you something, amen, nobody can take it away but you. And even you can't take it away. It is the gifts of God are not unto repentance. They're yours for the asking so that God can operate in your life. But that does not mean that you can operate outside of his will and think it's going to be all right. You've got to find a way that no matter what you're going through, you've got to give God the praise because he has called you out of sin. See, the problem is that we forget that we used to be sinners saved by grace. We forget how much liquor we've drunk. Amen. How much weed we've smoked. Amen. How many things we stole. We forget about those and we look at other people like look at him and how they're messed up. Every time I look at a soul coming down, I thank God that he gave me the ability to share the gospel with them that would give them an opportunity to love God for themselves. Oh, God, just give me a few minutes more and I'm going to let you go. Amen. We understand at least for, remember, hey, can it be that they thought, uh, did not even cross his mind, the thought of him asking God that question. Amen. Sometimes when the preachers get together, they start asking all of these philosophical and historical questions. Amen. So that they can sound smart and intelligent. Amen. And make you think. But after all of those words that I hear, I just simply say thank you God amen because I got the Holy Ghost and if I pray long enough God gonna reveal it to me look at somebody and say he will reveal it to you uh, <laughs> here it is we understand maybe it was Elijah who looked at the cross the great valley who looked across the great valley of dry bones that lay before him and seemed like heartbroken an indication that he indeed all the hope that he had for the majority of Israel was bleached on the sands of the valley. Amen. They found themselves that there was a remnant though. Amen. There was a remnant that arose that certainly wouldn't be formed out of a pile of dirt and a pile of death. Amen. There was a remnant that was in the valley that was going to come together, amen, that was going to stand on the promises of God. See, so many times we think that the only time we can have church is that when we have a greater number of people, amen, but the truth is that where there's two or three that is gathered together in my name, there will I be in the midst. Can I take my time here? Amen. Certainly he found themselves in the pile of death that there was no way, shape, form, or fashion. Amen. That they could understand what was going on. So in the silence of the moment. Amen. As God and Ezekiel took the time and the shadows of despair of the valley of the bones, God asked the question to Ezekiel. God either could not or would not answer. A question that only God could supply the answer to him. Ezekiel said as much as, Lord, my God, you know. Amen. You know that you have the power, if you choose to, amen, to breathe life into this body. Amen. You have the ability to breathe on them and they will come together. Amen. You know some in, in translations insert the word of the Ephesus, my Lord. Amen. Sometimes you want to make it personal. Amen. To say, my Lord, I know you able. There have been times in my life that I didn't know how God was going to bring me out. There have been times in my life when I look from a, a mathematical or a human way. Uh, there was no way, shape, or form that there was going to translate into victory for me. Uh, amen. But sometimes you just got to wait on God. 
Sometimes you got to say that even though I'm dying, amen, the God I serve has the ability to bring life. Amen. I need you to touch somebody on the shoulder and say, live, live, live. Amen. Because the God I serve has not forgotten about you. Here it is. I understand that my Lord, you know. Amen. Can these bones live again? Amen. You tell me. Amen. God, you tell me if you have the ability to breathe life into them. And for an answer and for an affirmation would require a miracle that only God can provide in order for him to bring life to these bleached bones. Amen. To the marrow that had been exposed to the heat. Amen. That had dried up all the fruit that was in them. Amen. That the clothing that they were on had parched and had burnt down and had melted in the sand. How in the world can you make it? Amen. Marching out or marshalling out out of nothing of the universe. I begin to say, wait a minute. You mean the same God? Mm, that took a handful of stars uh, and began to throw them out into the emptiness of space uh, and said, let there be light uh, has the same authority. Uh, amen. That he can speak to the bones. Uh, is it the same God? Uh, they men that began to say, let the moon uh, rotate around the earth. Uh, amen. And let the sun stand still. Uh, Amen. And as the earth revolves, uh, I want you to heed them, oh God. Uh, here they are. We are seeing uh, that the God we serve has the ability uh, to speak things into existence. Uh, amen. I praise him uh, for being so good. Uh, I praise him. Uh, amen. That he looked beyond all my faults uh, and saw my needs. Uh, I'm praising God. Uh, here it is, we understand the complexity uh, of how he said, let there be, uh, and there was. Uh, he understand the complexity uh, that scientists and poets uh, have been through the ages found strong, uh, no shortage of material mm, uh, for an explanation to the invocation of God. Uh, amen, here it is, forming, oh God. Uh, amen, and fascinating, and fashioning, uh, Amen. The universe through the power of his voice. Here it is. He didn't use his hand. I'm deep here this morning. Amen. His voice. Amen. Began to speak some stuff. He said, let there be. Amen. And there was. I need somebody in here that's ready to use your voice and say, Lord, heal my family. Y'all didn't get it. Huh? Amen. God said, huh? if you open up your mouth, huh? I'll speak for you. Huh? Open up your mouth and say, Lord, huh? my family, huh? my children, huh? my boss. Huh? Lord, open up your mouth huh? and say it. The words huh? that are constructing life. Huh? Amen. The words huh? that put the elements together. Huh? Amen. The seven colors of the spectrum uh, that presents life uh, amen and light uh, amen he begins to understand it uh, that his voice began to speak uh, and while his voice was speaking uh, amen the space became brighter uh, amen here it is uh, amen a few months ago uh, amen the sun was up at six o'clock in the morning uh, amen now it's dark at six o'clock in the evening. Uh, amen. God put a timer uh, on how long it's going to shine on us uh, and we got to learn how to praise him uh, because his voice uh, has the ability to bless you. Uh, his voice uh, will open up doors for you. Uh, 
Uh, here it is, his voice. Uh, amen. The words that were constructed. Uh, amen. Creatures uh, and environments uh, and pinnacles of all of us. Uh, and God was asked. Uh, and God asked and answered uh, his question over and over. Uh, amen. His provisions. Uh, amen. And his covering uh, for the same. Uh, amen. Of the shame of sin. Uh, and Abram, uh, Adam, and Eve uh, were in the garden, oh God, uh, and the olive branch of deliverance uh, by the dove uh, to Noah that waited uh, for the waters to recede. Uh, in the words of Joseph, uh, in his brothers upon the discovery uh, that he had just survived uh, the cruelty of their actions, uh, but because their means of salvation uh, was through the family. I'm here to tell you that the storms uh, that you're going through uh, are only for a season uh, because everything you go through uh, is for your blessing. Uh, every illness is in your body uh, will let you know that the God we serve uh, is a God that cannot lie. Uh, everybody in here ought to scream uh, because the God we serve has not forgotten about us. Amen. He came through 40 and two generations. He came to pour out his anointing on you. I'm here to tell you that just that life, oh God, was here to destroy you. This is why they made up in their mind. They tried to kill you before you could get to your completeness. They tried to stop you. But God God had protection around you. Uh, somebody ought to scream up in here. Uh, I should be dead, uh, but I heard him say, live, live, live. Uh, I shall live. Uh, I'm here to preach to you uh, that no matter how difficult it looks, uh, the God we serve has the ability to bring you out. Amen. Here it is. That while on the Mount of Sinai, he formed them into the nation and bound them to have hope in God. And man, and later, they would complain and they worshiped the golden image. And when they brought the fear in the eyes of the ten spies returning with the scouting mission, when they went into Canaan, God asked to answer the question and brought down the walls of Jericho. Everywhere they went, God answered the questions that came in the minds of man. You know the questions. How can you make me? You know my educational background. You know the way I talk. It's not always seemingly present. People don't like me. They keep reminding Reminding me of what I used to be. Huh? How in the world can I praise you huh? when they keep telling me about I'm no good? Huh? I'm never gonna mount to anything. Huh? How in the world huh? can I be successful huh? in trying to give you the best praise? Huh? But I've come to give you a word. Huh? God knows who you are. Huh? He called you from the beginning of time huh? before He put you together. Huh? He knew what the plan for you was. He knew you were going to be a way maker. He knew he was going to open up the doors. He knew uh, he was going to shine on you. Uh, here I am, church. Uh, he knew every made mistake. Uh, look at somebody. Uh, he said he knew everything about me. Uh, just like the woman on the well. Uh, when she tried to draw some water, uh, he told her everything that she did, uh, but gave her a message. Uh, Go tell everybody uh, about who I am. Uh, I'm here to tell he tells Ezekiel to prophesy to the bones. Tell them to come together. I've come to give you a word. I know they think we're dead. I know they think there's trying to be confusion. But the devil is a liar. I speak it with the voice of God. You shall live and shall not die. 
die. Leap, live. You're going to be lifted up. I'm here to tell you that when the walls of Jericho fell, amen, and brought destruction to the Canaanites, amen, when everybody else died except the prostitute Rahab, I'm here to tell you it's not about your past. Stop worrying about what you are. There's a miracle in your future. Look at somebody. I'm stepping in my future. Tell them I'm stepping in my future. I'm saying goodbye past. I'm praising you for being good. Somebody ought to scream up in here. You just got your charges dropped. Amen. You should be locked up in prison. But God said drop your charges. Here it is the O'Neill brothers. They said Jesus drop the charges. Case dismissed. And I'm here to share this with you. Look at your neighbor and say you wouldn't have liked to sit next to me about 10 years ago. But because of God's goodness I'm here giving him praise. Give him some praise. Amen. Open up your mouth. Amen. We ought to know for Melaha. Amen. For Mordecai and Esther as she faced the accepting of the people. And she had to go to them. And she found herself that had not been called for God. But she began to pray for the people of God. And while she was praying, she found herself. Amen. Walking oh God, towards the palace of the king. And all she can utter is if I suffer, I suffer. But I'm going to see the king. I made up in my mind, Hampton. I'm not going to let nobody stop me from getting to God. I'm not going to let no liars, no Benzabar, no hookers. I'm not going to let nothing separate me from the love of God I heard they used to say I'm marching to Zion beautiful Zion in this world that we're living in the devil wants to stop us but I need about 10 people that are joined with me and said I'm a hold on I'm a hold on I'm a hold on until I can't hold no more. Israel in the time of assembly, amen, they would renew their covenant. They would repent of their sins and their past expectation for a far better opportunity of fulfillment obediently. And God asked them and answered the question through the promise of the prophets. Indeed, the restoration of would come in judgment. I want to let you know that God's judgment is getting ready to fall but I want to be under the blood I want to be in the protective power I want to go back to the old days when the Israelites were getting ready to leave Egypt and they told them to put on their clothes and put their shoes and get them ready because at midnight the death angel was going to come and when he said that he said but I've already made a way I've sprinkled some blood over your doorpost that when I see the blood I'll pass over you I'm here to tell you I'm glad I'm coming with the blood while everybody's shooting and guns are blazing I'm coming with the blood no matter where I am and what I'm going through, I'm coming through the blood. Yay, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. I'm not worried about red or blue. All I'm worried about is the blood of the Lamb. Live, church. You shall live. You're going to live to open your mouth. You're going to live to praise him. You're going to live to see your children speaking in the house of Holy Ghost. You're going to live to operate in his goodness. 
you going to live to mimic God's voice and say in the name of Jesus, I give you authority. I give you power to bind up the hands of the enemy. I give you authority that whatever you speak out of your mouth will happen. I dare you to open up your mouth and say, save my children. Open up your mouth and say, heal my body. Open up your mouth. studying it is that God took nothing but his voice to create a world it didn't have no plumb line did not have any bricks or mortar and he didn't even have the stuff that Pharaoh made the Egyptian the Israelites use to recreate create that great city that is still the time, stands of time, in Egypt. All he had was his voice. In darkness, in chapter one, he said, let there be. And there was. Amen. If I could push fast forward, Jesus says to them, as he's the only one, he begins to look at them and say, whatsoever you say and do in my name, amen, I'm going to do that for you. Amen. Here it is. He tells them the same things you see me doing, you will have the same authority. Wait a minute, Reed. You mean there's some stuff that I can speak and it will happen? The scripture said there's life and death. But you're so busy speaking death that you forget the importance of speaking life. I find myself, I find myself leaving and getting up and walking away from stuff I perceive to be negative. I, I don't want it to be attached to me. I, I don't want it to be attached to me. Yeah, that's right. I can't allow myself to be drawn because that has the ability to sap your strength. And when it saps your strength, the next thing is will do will kill you. But I want to live. I want to live. Uh, uh, I ain't finished this message. But I need you to do something for me. I need you to think just for a few minutes what you need God to do in your life and who you need him to do it for. Close your eyes. I don't want you to tell me. I don't want you to look at nobody. Just talk to the Lord for a moment. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to do one thing for me. I need you to stand up and find you some groups of two or three and hold hands. Don't leave the circle open. Close. Shh. 
squeeze that hand. Come on. 